Because this subject is of such interest to so many people, we've decided to extend our visit here with John Power at Power, Weiss, and Kernet to explore the whole arena of the living trust in more detail. He is an estate planning attorney, and we began by asking him to tell us, in his opinion, what is the difference between a good estate planning attorney and a great one. In, in my opinion, a good estate planning attorney can show clients how to save estate taxes, generation skipping taxes, how they can protect the family legally. Uh, a great estate planning attorney, in my opinion, can do all of that as well, but in addition to that, is able to walk the family through the emotional minefield that estate planning involves. Estate planning is very, very psychological. Uh, most people do not, uh, are not comfortable dealing with their own mortality, and I plead guilty to that myself. I can give I can give uh, people great advice if I'm given the opportunity, but if someone asks me about my estate plan, I'll become paralyzed. So we're very, very, very sensitive to uh, uh, the emotional component of, of estate planning. And I think a great estate planning attorney uh, can deal with the emotional side too, because that is so important to our clients because they have to get through this, this emotional, get over this emotional hurdle. Otherwise, they can't bring themselves to do what they know needs to be done for their children. The emotional impact really is a very important aspect I hadn't even thought of before. How do you support a family when the death does occur? First of all, we have enormous respect for our clients. Uh, we may know more, more about estate planning than they do, but we recognize full well that they know a lot about a lot of things that we don't know. So we find, our clients tell us all the time, they've never met an attorney or attorneys. We have other attorneys in this firm besides myself who are uh, uh, in, the, in our estate planning department. They've never met attorneys so approachable. Most people, when they think of an attorney, is someone who's, you know, kind of, kind of stiff, uh, kind of difficult to talk to. That goes a long way to making people feel comfortable talking about this very, very sensitive and difficult uh, area. Uh, we also uh, try to uh, emphasize to our clients, and they appreciate it immensely, that estate planning is not a one-shot deal. In our opinion, it's the beginning of a relationship. And just as we have good relationships with our physician, with our dentist, with our barber and hairdresser, we try to have that kind of relationship with, uh, with our clients as well. Because in setting up an estate plan, it's sort of a fluid document. Circumstances change. We offer every one of our clients a three-year review without charge because maybe circumstances have changed, relationships have changed, finances have changed, health has changed. Um, so our clients are very, very... Uh, uh, comfortable with the fact that in all likelihood we as a firm will be available to, to, to handle their needs to protect their children as the years go by. And even if they don't make any changes, they like the fact that we are available or in all likelihood will be available for their children who may need a helping hand uh, after, after they're gone. You said that a living trust is really not for everyone. Well, let's find out. Who is this not for? Well, a living trust uh, uh, can probably benefit almost anyone, but at some point there's a cost-benefit analysis that has to be taken into account. If someone has a net worth of $100,000, uh, the living trust will be beneficial to them, no question about it, or to their families, rather. But the cost of setting it up may be disproportionately high, and we probably, with somebody with a net worth of 100000 would say that you can benefit, but we don't recommend you do it. You can use your money more effectively elsewhere. Uh, other people might have assets uh, in, in, in corporations or limited partnerships that have restrictions in them, so they can't transfer ownership to their, their, their partnership interests or their corporate interests to the trust. That would become an unfunded trust. Now, there are plenty of unfunded trusts around, and they are valuable, but not as valuable as a fully funded trust. Is a living trust valid in, in every state in this country? Living trust is valid in all 50 states, and this is a major appeal because we live in a mobile society where people are moving from state to state with increasing frequency. Uh, here in the New York area, uh, my guess is a good share of the population sooner or later will end up in, in Florida. And when we uh, prepare a living trust for them, they have the comfort of knowing that if they move to Florida, they don't have to start all over again. They don't have to start looking for a trust in a state attorney, and they don't have to go through the aggravation, and they don't have to duplicate the legal fee either. So it is good in all 50 states, um, and that, that's one of the, big, that's one of the big, big attractions. Another interesting question is, can a living trust live from generation to generation? We generally recommend that assets be left in trust 
or the, the bulk of them left in trust for their children and their grandchildren, perhaps their great-grandchildren, rather than outright. Uh, the reason being that the children essentially have the same economic access to the assets, but to a large degree those assets are going to escape, escape taxation when the children die, escape taxation again when the great-grandchildren die, and we know that when the, we'll say the great-grandchildren get the assets, they're going to get probably ten times more than they would have had they been in the state tax paid at every single uh, generational level. And also by leaving assets in trust from generation to generation, not only can this save enormous taxes uh, by bypassing generations, it can put the assets beyond the reach of, of, of children's creditors, uh, an estranged spouse, of, uh, of a child. Uh, if a child gets a divorce, maybe the child's going to be wiped out, or at least half the assets are going to be going to the estranged spouse. But if the assets are left in trust for that child, as opposed to outright, those assets basically should be off the table and beyond the reach of the, the estranged spouse. So there's a lot of both practical and legal reasons, there's creditor protection reasons and there's tax reasons. And many of our, our estate plans uh, include what we call, we call these dynasty trusts because they, they really they can last for a hundred years. This firm is one of the very few that gives seminars on this subject, and I'm just wondering what happens at, at those seminars. Do most people f come up and tell you they're interested? Uh, that's, uh, that's very interesting because almost at the end of every seminar, we have so many people come to us and say, when they make an appointment to, to meet with us one-on-one -on -one in the privacy of our office to discuss their personal affairs, They'll say, uh, I didn't know where to turn. Um, I'd heard about living trusts and Barnes and Noble and my library. I read articles in Money Magazine and Fortune Magazine. Um, but I had, I had no way of knowing how to find an attorney who, who could explain living trusts to me. And they tell us they're really grateful that we put on these uh, uh, informational seminars so that uh, people tell us that we have provided them with a roadmap for them to make the right choices uh, for the benefit of their family. And we love doing what we're doing. Um, some of the other attorneys in this firm are litigators, and their idea of a, of a good day is, is uh, uh, you know, dropping bombs on somebody. And that, there's a need for that from time to time. We in the estate planning uh, department here in the firm love to help people. And we, we succeed in doing that every single day. And even on a financial level, Probably not a day goes by that we don't save our clients at least a million dollars in taxes. And we can do that very easily. When, when our clients have, have a significant net worth, uh, we, we have the opportunity to show them how they can save literally many millions of dollars of taxes. So there you have it, the details on a remarkable instrument known as the Living Trust. Now, back to you in the studio. And that'll do it for this special edition of Global Business Trends, the program that shows our viewers how businesses and industries function. And how technology is rapidly changing and creating many new business opportunities. On behalf of our entire staff, I'm Jim Lang. And I'm Bella Shaw. Thank you so much for watching.